Welcome to another exciting episode of Come Out and Play Chandler. I'm your host, Lisa Aquafreda. We are at the inaugural Chuck Wagon Cook-Off where four teams are going to be cooking up a feast. Is that right, ladies? Sure is. Yes, it sure is. <laughs> the Chandler Museum, along with a number of sponsors, joined forces to host the inaugural Chuck Wagon Cook-Off at Tumbleweed Ranch. The goal of the event was to feature experiences that visitors could interact with that had something to do with Western culture and cowboys, 1880s cattle drives, techniques of cooking, and technology of the 1880s. Some of the demonstrators included the Desert Weavers and Spinners Guild, Candle Making Station, Horseback Riding, and more. The vendors from the event definitely added to the atmosphere, and many focused on adding the Old West history to their area. In addition, each wagon focused on authenticity and interacted with the visitors as they came to their wagon, sharing their chuck wagon and Dutch oven cooking stories and family history. Well, we're from an old ranch family, both sets of us, and my husband's father used to go out on the range and cook and have the chuck wagon actually to go out with them. And so he's sort of our authority. And then my great uncle used to cook for the Lazy Bees in Arizona, and he was actually a chuck wagon cook. And so we have it in our blood, and he loves to cook, and I love him. So there, is, <laughs> there we go. We call it cowboy popcorn. Okay, um, let me see. The littlest pieces are the best. Oh. And um, my husband cuts the trimmings off of the beef oh. and he cooks it down and that's what we cook our, our beef in is the natural juices come from the steak. And that's a yeah. Thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> the visitors were also able to learn more about the struggles and challenges the cowboys and their families endured. When you stop and think about the pioneers that are coming across the trails, I mean, out here we're on flat level ground, so it's pretty easy to move these wagons around. But when you think of them going up over the mountains and down into canyons and things and, and not having the resources that we have nowadays, I mean, it was a tough deal for them. So you kind of gain an appreciation for what our ancestors did. Also on the trail drives where they drive the cattle market, probably pretty tough on them, you know, just trying to keep the crew fed all the time. And, and the cookie was the one that other than the trail boss, he was the next man in, in command and paid the best uh, because he was such a vital part of the crew. So, you know, he was the one that was usually the first one up in the morning and he was the last one to go to bed at night. And there were some responsibilities he had other than cooking. He was also the, the camp doctor. You know, a lot of those things came into play as well. So keep in mind that guys on the trail drives didn't get to eat this way. They couldn't eat the beef because that's their money. So if they kill a cow, and want to eat it, then they've lost whatever it was going ahead back then. So they're eating a lot better here than the poor cowboys ate back then. It's great for families and great for little kids to see how cooking was once done over an open wood fire. And hopefully they will take some things they learn here home and practice them in their backyard or on their camping trips. So. We hope they come and enjoy the food and enjoy the, the atmosphere and learn a little something. More truck wagon fun after this fun fact. I'll do all the cooking, honey, and I don't cook, and I will even pay your rent. This was a two-day event. Day one of the competition was the judging on the most authentic wagon. The event started a day earlier when each chuck wagon was judged on authenticity. This requires the competitors to ensure that all parts of the chuck wagon, from the saddle in the front to the comb in the drawer, are authentic to the late 1800s, early 1900s. Well, our wagon is actually an 1890s Pekin grain wagon from Pekin, Illinois, and a guy in Fort Davis, Texas restored it, and we bought it from him. My wagon's a 1907 Peter Shuttler uh, chuck wagon. 
picked it up in Oklahoma about five years ago and restored it. I'm a member of the American Track Wagon Association. My wagon number is number 43, so that's kind of cool. So. Day two of the competition started off as early as 4 a.m. for some of the competitors. We started at about 5.30 this morning because we want to make sure our beans get done. We have to turn in at 11.45, so however long it takes you to cook, you start early enough to get it done. <laughs> the Biscuit Flats Wagon is the host wagon for the event. And as the host wagon, we prepared dinner last night for the other wagon crews that are competing. And then we're just doing samples for the public today. They're going to see cooking as it was done in the late 1800s, 1860 to 1900, uh, over an open fire with cast iron pots, no aluminum, no Tupperware, no microwaves, so it's pretty interesting for them. We have four teams that are competing this year. These teams are all local teams. There's a team here from Safford, one from Casa Grande, one from Rimrock, and one from Phoenix. It's really more of a, a competition against the elements, and the challenge in doing this sort of cooking is that the weather is a big factor. If it's windy, the fires act differently. Different kinds of wood burn hotter than other kinds of wood. So all those unknowns play into the challenges you have in cooking out here. The wagon teams are all judged on five categories. They're gonna be preparing meat, bread, beans, potatoes, and dessert. The meat can be prepared however they wish. A lot of them will probably do some kind of a fried steak. Uh, there may be stews, there may be roasts. And then we gave them dried peaches for their dessert, so they have to use those and they have to reconstitute those and then make uh, some sort of dessert out of them. It, there could be fried pies, there could be cobblers. And then, of course, the, the pinto beans, the cowboy beans that were traditional. And potatoes, however they fix them. And then bread uh, needs to be either a biscuit, a sourdough, or a yeast roll that's cooked in, a, in an oven over the coals, a uh, Dutch oven. For this chuck whacking competition, the sponsors provided us with the basics, the staples. And then each wagon hook provides the extra little things that they want. Like, obviously, I have to bring my own sourdough for that sourdough cobbler. But that, that's what makes each wagon its own unique recipe and they don't tell you what fruit you're getting to do to the dessert until they start handing out the food. We're doing a pasoli, which is a southwest pork stew with tomatoes and hominy in it. And then uh, we're also doing a cobbler, and we're doing chicken fried steak fingers, strips of steak that are fried. So there's a lot of stuff in addition to the vendors that are out here with food also. We're actually the Buzzard Circle Inn, and as you see up there on our board down there by our menu board, we've actually got some buzzards up there. And so a lot of people wonder if that's what's actually in our pots. It's a Cannon family chuck wagon cooking. And we do a smothered steak. And what we do is we cut the trimmings off of the beef and we cook them in its own juice. And then we flour and fry. And it's wonderful. It's just very, very tender. My husband makes the best bacon powder biscuits, flaky and big and huge and yummy. You don't even have to have honey or butter on them. And then he makes a good, wonderful cobbler. All of the wagons that are here today, we have all cooked with each other. And so we have a really great camaraderie because um, we give each other heck, but um, we also help each other out. It's a family atmosphere. The name of my chuck wagon is Gummer's Camp, named after my grandfather. He was a uh, camp cook on a lot of roundups in eastern Arizona, and uh, I was too little to get to go with him, and when he died, that was kind of his nickname all the cowboys give to him, so I thought I'd carry on the tradition, so that's why my camp's named after him. And I'm proud of my biscuits and gravy. I think that's my specialty. So. But I work hard on all of it, so, but that's kind of what I, my forte is the biscuits and gravy. We have potatoes in the little blue pot, cowboy coffee, some sweet beans and some beef tips over there and I'm going to make gravy from scratch in about 15 minutes. As we say in uh, cowboy talk, uh, pretty soon it'll be done and we'll be ready to serve it up. So, but anyway, we're going to have a lot of that uh, going. We like to do the chicken fried steak because that's what people expect when they come out here. So we do chicken fried steak and gravy. We're doing potatoes with onions and bacon. We do a sourdough peach cobbler. So the cake part is made out with sourdough and that makes it a little bit unique. 
our beans are award-winning at the national championship a couple years ago, so we stick to our beans, and then we're just doing biscuits. I've actually got people that have been coming up to us. We had some lady from England that was here last night. Uh, we've got some people that have come down from Sholo. There was a guy earlier this morning from Riverside, California that came over just for this event. So, you know, it's not just Chandler that it's pulling. It's pulling the tourists in from other places. Serving time is at 12 o'clock, and then the judges are going to come get the food at a 15 minutes tail, and then they'll go over and judge the food. All the hard work has finally come to an end. We are in the process of judging some great chuck wagon food and while we do that look at this fun fact